Hi, this is Erin and welcome to Everything EFL, my little podcast about English language teaching and other teachy stuff too. Credit and honourable mentions will be given during the episode or in the show notes. Let's crack on. Hello, you gorgeous teacher. If you're a brand new listener to Everything EFL, you are most welcome. Where have you been? If you're one of my lovely regular listeners, welcome back. I'm really glad you're here. So what are we doing this week? Well, this is going to be the first of a short series of episodes on reflection. Um, I'm a big fan. If you watch my videos on my Facebook group, you know that this is true. Um, And I just really want to share some of the stuff I've tried in class. And you can have a listen and do with the information as you will. I will say, and I do always say that you know your students best. So if I suggest anything here and you don't think it's quite right for your students, before you completely abandon the whole thing, just, you know, ask yourself, is there something I can do to tweak this or make it a little bit more suitable for my students? Anyway, let's get cracking. Got a lot to talk about. So I suppose the first question is, what do your students do outside class to improve their English? The answer I expect is very mixed. (laughs) You could have a lot of students who do a lot and a lot of students who don't. But as it was kind of the beginning of the year a few weeks ago, I thought it would be a good idea to, you know, think about this question and then set some goals with my students. Um, And I chose this time because most of my students were new or they'd only been in Ireland for a short time. But, you know, you can do this any time. It's definitely never too late anyway. So... What do your students usually do outside class to improve their English? Well, you know, there are the usual suspects, songs, Netflix. But um, I often found that, you know, students would set goals for themselves and just not accomplish them. And, you know, there are loads of reasons for that. But some goals are a little bit too big, I think. Some students just want to say, you know, I want to improve my English. OK, but ha- ha- you know, that's like a mountain. How can we break that down into smaller steps? We're going to talk about that in a bit and the kinds of stuff that your students can do. But I just want to talk a little bit about why I think setting goals is beneficial for your students. You are handing a bit of the responsibility over to your students. Ultimately, you want your students to learn how to learn. And if you can get them to set a few small goals for themselves every week or every month, you know, they're you're going to start getting those really valuable small victories. And I think that's a great starting point. I think also that if they set the right goals and if they accomplish or partly accomplish them, that small victory can lead to that that warm glow of achievement, which in turn, you know, creates a positive feeling, which in turn creates that self-esteem and which in turn you know, creates that growth in confidence, which in turn creates the big one, the shift in motivation. And also doing this kind of thing as a class, um, you know, it creates that community. Students can share their experiences. They can give advice. They can share their success stories. Um, You know, it's it can be collaborative that way. And it all comes from the students themselves. Raise your hands if you love low to no prep activities where the students do everything. Okay, so I've kind of divided this just into a couple of simple stages. Uh, Stage one is called what to do. So the first thing, obviously, is to brainstorm a list of what students can do to improve their English in class. Let it all come from the students. So I'm going to give you the list that my students gave me a few weeks ago. Change your phone settings. Change your laptop settings. Notice conversations around you on the bus. That's obviously if they are studying in a native speaking country. Watch kids movies, read kids books, songs on YouTube, speak to people of other nationalities. Again, if they are studying in an English speaking environment and they tend to stick to their own nationality. Step outside your comfort zone. Speak English all the time. Don't translate. Watch TED Talks and join a club. Now, I added one thing, and it really is more of a mantra than than a, than a, a how-to, but it's everything is a process. So, you know, taking those small steps, as long as your student can get to the end of the week and say, I did something, you know, that is what progress is. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, fast or slow. I think any measure of progress or perceived progress will make your students feel good about themselves. 
So then I asked them, you know, look at that list. They all copied it into their book. What appeals to you? Which goals do we need to break down into smaller steps? So, for example, a lot of the students really like the idea of joining a club on the university campus. Um, but that can be quite intimidating. So we broke it down. You know, first you go onto the campus website and you find um, a club or a society you like. Then you find out the times. And then you go. You know, this may seem a bit obvious, but to some, like I said, it can be very daunting joining a club. So, you know, if you get the students to do those initial things first, they're kind of halfway there. And I think maybe they'll be more inclined to, you know, make that leap, push themselves outside their comfort zone and actually go. So there are some key things to remember with this, guys. It's important that the students' goals aren't too ambitious. Start small. Achieve all those little, all-important small victories and build on them. So one of my students said that she wanted to read a book a month. Um, and I think that's that's quite a quite a big goal, to be honest. But at the end of the day, what you can do if that isn't working out is get them to talk about it. And you'll see when we talk about reflection how this will work. So, you know, is this taking a bit longer than you thought? What are the reasons for that? You know, are you too tired to read or do you just not have the inclination to read? Maybe the book is too difficult for you. Here's a little bonus tip here if students would like to do some reading for pleasure. They have to make sure that, you know, obviously it's engaging and, and, and it's some kind of topic or genre they're interested in. But they also have to be able to understand about 80% of the text Reading for pleasure should be exactly that. It shouldn't feel like a chore. And, you know, the engagement and motivation will decrease dramatically if they can't really understand what they're reading. And we all know what happens to motivation at that point. The next thing to remember is that the goals must come from the students themselves. What they want to do, how much they want to do. And whether they want to do anything at all comes down to your students and it's their right to say, yeah, I'll engage with this or no, I'm not interested. All you can do is kind of guide them in the right direction. And the last thing, and I think I've just kind of tapped into this a little bit with the reading example, but interest and engagement is key. And that kind of links back to the choice. Students have to choose things that they are interested in. And then that's half the battle right there. So stage two is reflection and tweaking goals. So every week we reflect in class. Um, on a Monday, I will put up some questions on the board that they have to discuss in pairs or threes. And it's about, you know, how far they got with their goals. So you may want to grab a pen here, guys, and hover your finger over the pause button because I'm just going to tell you the questions that I asked the students to discuss. So the first one is, what were your improve my English goals this week? Do you feel like you've achieved them? If so, why? If not, why not? And I told them, you know, you know, these questions are not to judge you about what you didn't do, but it's to look at what you did do and the reasons behind it so that you can look at your goals and decide whether you need to lessen the goals for the next week or, you know, maybe there was just too much going on this week. Maybe you just set yourself too many goals for the time you had. You know, and this is the chance where they kind of reflect and talk about that. Can you do more next week or do you feel happy with the amount that you're doing to improve your English? Should you do less next week because of time or other plans? What are your goals going to be for next week? And again, they go back to their how to improve your English suggestions list and they tell their partner and write their new goals for the, the coming week in their notebook. So I tend not to butt in too much. I kind of monitor lightly and, and help if needed. Now, this also is a really good chance to share those success stories. So one of my students, he brought his skateboard to Ireland and he wanted to go to his local skateboarding park. And that was one of his goals. And he went and he had a conversation with an Irish boy. Delighted. Would he have done that on his own? Maybe. But maybe the goal setting session gave him that little push to do it earlier than he would have done without that goal setting session. Now, with success comes praise. Now, it depends on your class. You know them best. It could be, you know, a round of applause. It could just be an exchange of phrases of encouragement and well done and all of that. You know, 
but this kind of this praise and this story sharing really leads the way for lots of you know back slapping and compliment giving and in turn again it creates that warm fuzzy feeling and you know that kind of stuff can just do wonders for confidence and motivation and then last week um just as a little bonus for you guys i added a little extra um sort of question at the end for them to discuss um i gave them all a mini whiteboard and a marker and i asked them i want you to write down two numbers out of 10 how was your confidence level at the beginning of this course and how is it now Show your partner your numbers and and talk about them. You know, if there is um, a little uptake in that score, what has changed? And the interesting thing is that most of my students have been here a couple of weeks. Everybody wrote down two numbers and the second number was two points higher all round. So if somebody wrote four for the first number, it was six for the next number. And that was really consistent all the way around and one of my students commented oh you know a small number and I said yeah but remember what I told you everything is a process it's two this week but what about next week and then what about the week after you know if you carry on doing what you're doing that number will go up so that's it I'm going to go and have a cup of tea I'm th- all this talking has made me thirsty. Um, if you are not subscribed to Everything FL Podcast, I don't know why, hit that subscribe button before you switch off your phone. If you are on social media, I'm on Instagram under Everything EFL Teacher, where I post a few reels and I throw some stuff on my stories. It's all very random, but I often take photographs of what I'm doing in class as well. So you can get a few little extra ideas there. But the really juicy stuff is on my Facebook group, my private Facebook group called Get Away From That Course Book. So if you would like to join please do so. I'll be delighted to have you. I post videos and I'm starting to tell a few more stories and they seem to be getting a bit longer. But um, I, I just want to try and impart as much you know, knowledge and advice as I can. And, you know, maybe I'm not always right, but that's that's for you to decide and to to debate um, on each post. You know, I'm very open to having discussions and debates. Not just so that I can teach you guys. I want everybody to learn from each other. I want everybody to share their stories, share their knowledge, tips and advice as well. So if that sounds like something that you'd be interested in, um, like I said, come on over and um, I'll be absolutely delighted to have you. Anyway, I'm going to leave you to it now. As always, have a lovely, peaceful week. Look after yourselves, guys. Recommend this episode or my podcast to a colleague of yours if you think they'd enjoy it. And, as always, share the love, guys. Share the love. (laughs) 